this has been last week. I mean, it's been an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly difficult week for me. Um, I lost one of my one of my lifelong childhood friends. You know, shout out to my man Andy. Um, rest in peace, Andy. You know, this is a guy I came up with. You know, one of my brother's best friends in life. Uh, 169 Franklin Avenue, Boogie Down Bronx. This is a Bronx legend, y'all. This is somebody I've known more than half my life. And, um, you know, this COVID thing is real. This was not somebody who, you know, had pre-existing health conditions. This was not somebody that, that had, you know, underlying health problems it was COVID and I, and I know a lot of y'all are on the fence about taking your COVID shots. Should you do it? Should you not do it? I'm telling you, th th this man was healthy and that COVID took him out of here. It was COVID that broke him down. It was COVID that shut down his organs. It was COVID that shut down his lungs. And I just want everybody, please, if you are on the fence about taking that vaccine, please reconsider because there's somebody out there that loves you. There's somebody out there that would be devastated if you left this world. Then, as we know, you know, we lost my man, Black Rob. So I lost Andy on Thursday and Black Rob on Saturday. It was only a week ago, literally last week, Monday, that we was in this same live and I was asking everybody to pray for Rob. And we sat and we talked about Rob. And a week later, less than a week later, Rob is gone. And I'm just sending my condolences again out to his family. I'm sending my condolences to his children. And I need all of us, like, guys, this is a wake up call. This is that, this is that, it's that beep, beep, that, that, that red light. This is like, what more do you need before you say, I'm going to give it everything I got. Every time I wake up, if God bless me to breathe this air, if God bless me to open my eye, because it ain't guaranteed. It just ain't. What is it? that you need to have happen that's going to make you say I'm going a hundred percent a hundred percent of the time life is too short it's just too short this time ain't guaranteed to us y'all you know we all know about a black rob but in the last week there's two mass shootings there's a bunch of people we never ever We'll know their names, but their family is out there and they're hurting. Their family's out there and they having conversations just like this. So I'm asking all of y'all get serious, get, get, just get laser focused on going after it. It ain't no more playtime. Playtime is up. We don't know when. Anything is going to happen to us. We just don't know. And. It's again, I mean, I'm wearing my man's shirt. My man, Michael Smith. Y'all know this is my brother. No longer here. It's like every time I wake up, it's something. So I need everybody laser focused in this live tonight. I need everybody laser focused. Yes, we know Rob. Yes, he was a great friend, but there's a whole lot of brothers, sisters, mothers, aunts, children out there who's hurting. And even though last week was a tough week, it was also a really good week. And it was a good week for me because I'm having the opportunity week over week to speak more and to really, really go hard and 
I'm being, you know, it's it's crazy, right? Because for me, I actually thought that this speaking thing was going to be a little more difficult than it's turning out to be. I'm not a speaker. This ain't where I made my name for myself. I made my name for myself in music and marketing. So when I came into this industry, I'm thinking it's going to be a lot harder than what it was or what it's turning out to be. And I'm saying this. I'm saying, and I know typically I come on and I do the whole motivational thing for y'all, but I just want to talk to everybody tonight. If you just bear with me, right? Because last week I got to speak at about three, four different places. And every time I speak, I feel like I'm getting my weight up. I feel like I'm in the gym and I'm doing my reps and I'm getting a little bit better and a little bit more confident. Once upon a time, I was only speaking to guys on the gram. I'm coming on Monday nights. This is the only time I really have a chance to do what I do. And now that I just said, you know what? Let me put it out there. I think I'm ready. The doors are starting to open up. And the doors is opening up for a reason that I didn't necessarily think about when I started doing it. And what I mean by doing that, doing what I mean by that is when I started speaking, I thought everybody was going to want to hear the success story. I thought everybody was going to want to hear what it was like being in the music industry, sitting shoulder to shoulder with celebrities. But what I'm coming to find out is when I talk to these administrators and when I'm talking to students and when I'm talking to people, they're more intrigued by the grind, by the journey. They're more intrigued by me just say, how did I get from point A to where I ended up? That's the part. And that's what I want y'all to pay attention to tonight. Because I was talking to somebody, actually I was talking to a few people and they hit me, and these are people who love my content, they love what I do, and they was hitting me like, yo, Sean, I love what you do, but we want to know more about you. I want you to talk about what it was like being on private jets, what it was like sitting in studio sessions with Notorious B.I.G. What was it like running around with Rob and Sean, Carl Thomas, Faith Evans, and the many artists that I travel with, what was that like? Talk about some behind the scenes stuff that people just don't know. And for a minute, I was considering it. I actually sat down and was like, yo, you know what? If this is what the people want, this is what I got to give them. But the more I thought about it, my soul didn't feel right. The more I thought about it, I just couldn't come up with stories because that's not why I got into this. I tell a story here, I tell a story there, but if you want to hear them stories, you got to go listen to Drink Champs. When somebody else interview me, maybe they'll pull that out of me. But God didn't put me in this position so that I could sit around and talk about what it feels like to be on top. God put me in this position for one reason and one reason only. Sean, tell your truth. You come from the dirt. You come from the bottom. There's nothing sexy about my story. Nothing. All things considered, I shouldn't even be here. There's nothing remotely interesting or remotely special about Sean Prez. And that's what I choose to lock in on week over week because it's my truth. And I know when I speak, it resonates with somebody out there. They're ordinary people with a dream, nothing more. So if y'all are here and you're looking for stories about celebrities, this is the wrong place. Go turn on Fat Joe. If y'all are here and you want to know what it is to sit in VIP at a club, you want to know what it is to be in recording sessions with some of them stars, Go listen to Drink Champs. This is not the place. But if you want to know about the grind, 
If you want to know what it is to be on the bottom, have no clue and work your way up and be able to say, if he could do it, if that ordinary, nothing special dude who sits on IG live once a week and pours into, if he could do it, ain't no way in hell I can't do it. It is impossible because the only thing that separates him from me is he never gave up. The only thing that separates him from me is he refused to take no for an answer. I could tell y'all every day of the week what it feels like. Take five internships over six and a half years. That's my truth. I couldn't get in. I can tell y'all every single day of the week what it feels like to start the Global Spin Awards, which became an industry must attend, the Grammys for the DJs. But truth of the matter is, that is where me and Payne became best friends because I had a personal relationship with Murphy's Law. It took me four years of trying, four years of L's, four years of failures, four years of people not attending before that thing took off. Do you know how much money we lost? Do you know how many times after the Global Spin Awards, I wouldn't come out and show my face because I was embarrassed? This thing, it took years of building. I couldn't get people I knew to attend. It took Puff, a dude who I supported him from day one, four years to step in that building. But when he stepped in, when Khaled stepped in, when Flex stepped in, when Self stepped in, when Envy and all of these guys stepped in, that thing blew, but it's four years of heavy lifting. If y'all want to hear about that, I can tell you all day. I come from the dirt. I can tell you how to shovel that dirt week over week. I can tell you how to lay the pavement. I can tell you how to set your foundation. If that's what y'all are in here for, then you came to the right place. I can tell y'all what it is to start a marketing business. After marketing millions and millions and millions of records, and you get out there and you go and you do these pitch meetings and you got some people who want to get into the urban community, but they clearly ain't never been to the urban community. And you come in and you talking and you doing what you know to do, but you don't necessarily speak their language. And time and time and time again, they tell you, you know what? We'd rather go out there and hire a different agency, not realizing that I am the consumer that you trying to reach. I am the consumer that came from the same place that you are now trying to get your brand and your product into, but you don't trust us enough to hire us. So I can tell you a story about having to go out there and hire a Caucasian salesperson and put him front and center like he's the CEO. And we come into the pitch meeting and he's going through the different things on our proposals. And me and my crew are sitting in the background. Them not knowing that I'm the CEO and the president of this company. And that ain't until we started getting work coming in. Because now he spoke their language. But I had to swallow my pride and do whatever I can do just to start getting business in the door. I can tell you about that. Because that's where I come from. But it's my truth. I'm asking y'all, what is your truth? Like real talk. Are you living your truth? I can tell you easy what it's like growing up to an alcoholic father. Growing up loving this dude so much that every time he took a drink and put it down, I used to pour his drinks out. Every time he opened up a can of beer and put it down, I would pour it out. Until one day he sat me down and showed me, showed me his hands shaking and trembling screaming like Sean, I'm not drinking. 
because I'm trying to get high. I'm not drinking because I'm trying to get drunk. I need this. I need my body to settle before I can start my day. I need, this was medicine for this man. That I can tell you about. And when I go and I'm speaking to people and I'm giving them my truth, this thing ain't easy for me. All I can do is be the best version of Sean and give you my truth. I'm from the dirt. All y'all being truthful with just because that's where the success lies. You can't be successful doing something and being something that you're not. You can't be successful imitating and playing a role. It don't work like that. It just don't. I can tell you what it's like being in an industry and everybody drinking. And I'm saying, no, stand on my ground. People looking at me like I'm corny, not realizing that I spent half my life loving a man to death who couldn't put that bottle down. I can tell you what it's like. Weed is legal. Everybody getting high in the studio, at the clubs. And I'm saying, nah, that ain't for me. Because my stepfather was a heroin addict. That's my truth. But when I speak, this is all I can give y'all. I can't give you no more than that. I just can't. And when I was sitting there and I had this milestone, and that's why I said, even though last week was such a troubling week, God know how to balance the scales. He know how to give you a little bit just a little bit so that you can see light at the end of the tunnel. And I went and I spoke to this group of college students last week. And I'll never forget because they told me to come in and we want you to talk about Diddy. We want you to talk about your successes in the music industry. And as much as I tried, I knew in my heart, I trusted my God. This is why God brought me here. He didn't bring me here for this. I know why y'all are telling me that you want me to come to this school, but let me just do what I know and what I feel and what, what my gut is saying because my gut never failed me. They need to hear about the journey. That's what they need to hear about. They need to hear about that dude who dropped out of college. That's what they need to hear about. They need to hear about that dude who went soul searching and didn't stop till he figured out this is what I want to do with my life. And then went balls to the wall, full speed ahead. That's what they need to hear. And I remember when I was done and I was talking to them. And it's hard to get reactions out of kids. You know, they college students, I'm calling them kids. But it's hard to get reactions out of them in real time. And when I was done, the place erupted. Everybody, and it was so special because it was the first time I went for an hour straight. Like, I definitely could come in. I could give 15 minutes. I can give 25 minutes. I even went up to 45 minutes. But that was an hour straight of straight body blows and just going and just being sure and motivating the hell out of that place. And I remember when I was done, the kids told me straight up, like, look, this is the best class we ever took. And at first I'm sitting there and I'm saying to myself, maybe I got it wrong. I should have talked about Diddy. Maybe I got it wrong. I should have talked about Notorious B.I.G. Maybe I got it wrong and I should have talked about popping bottles and being in the club and traveling. But when it was done, the crowd spoke. And them kids hit me on the DM. Hit me and let me know, look, I know it ain't thousands of us in here. But for the 20-something odd kids that was in there, it was everything to them. But it was my truth. And I'm asking y'all, movers, live your truth. Live it. Be unapologetic about it. Because this is where you're going to find your, 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 your success. That's where you're going to find that thing that you've always wanted and that you're looking for. Stay inspired. Don't worry if nobody can't see what you're trying to build. Don't worry if it's taking you just a little bit longer. Everything I've ever built has taken me long. I'm pissed off to this day because I'm like, God, can you just give me something? Just one thing that happens overnight. 
But that ain't his plan for me. That don't mean I ain't going to get, because everywhere I put my mind to, every place that I believed, every place that I worked, I got there. But maybe he needs me to let people know this is a marathon. It ain't no sprint. This thing, this, this, this chasing success, this is long term. Are you invested in it? It's like putting your money in a stock market. Are you in like, like seriously, you can't put your money in. And when things are not looking good, you pull your, you're going to take an L. When you put that money in the market, you got to be willing to let that money sit. You got to be willing, no matter how the market go, the worst days, let it sit and turn back around years later and just watch it have grown. That's what this is like. But are you willing to be truthful to who you are and truly invest in your dream? Truly invest when, when nothing ain't happening. This is my investment. I'm going at it. When you don't see no dividends being paid, this is my investment. I'm keep going at it. When nobody's believing, this is my investment. I'm going to keep going at it because that is the only way, the only way you're going to find success. In my case, I would love it if tomorrow I'm taking on the number one person. Like, like to this day, every time I, I, I see Eric Thomas, I'm motivated. Every time I hear Eric Thomas, I'm motivated. He said he number one. Okay. You got to see me one day, brother. You are my motivation. What are your motivation movers? What is your motivation? Something got to keep you up at night. Something got to prevent you from sleeping. Something has got to keep you from giving up and tapping out. What is it? Find it. Hold on to it. Don't let it go. And I don't care how long it takes. I tell you my truth because I don't want y'all to think it's going to be easy. It ain't. But it will come through. You can't stop believing. You can't stop working at it. This is my truth. What's yours? Movers, I love y'all. Y'all know that. Keep Black Rob's family in your hearts, in your spirit. Keep all of these people, people who are sick and afflicted, people who will never know their name. Just going through this experience with my mother, it, have, it, like, it really makes you think. There's somebody out there while we are healthy and we're breathing and we're on IG Live. Somebody's in a hospital somewhere. We might not ever know their name. We might not ever come in contact with them, but keep them in your prayer. Please keep Rob's family in your prayers, DMX's family in your prayers, and I'll do the same for y'all. Check out that Romel Watley interview, and um, I guess I'll see all of you guys next week. Peace and love. Let's continue to keep supporting each other, y'all. One love.